Good afternoon, everybody. Rolly Hoyt here with you now at noon. The trial for Kayvon Ward underway in Garland County. We have the latest in the case against the man accused of killing a Hot Springs police officer. Plus, the heat is hitting AC units hard. What experts are saying about the problems you may be having at your house. Could climate change impact our ice cream? We've got the full scoop on the not so sweet situation. And we are getting our first look at the new Black Panther movie when the highly anticipated superhero blockbuster is hitting theaters. That's coming up a little bit later on. But we mentioned those ACs. We mentioned the weather. That brings in Nathan Scott, meteorologist, as we are everybody looking forward now so much to Thursday. That's the big day, right? Good afternoon, Rolly. Yes, I've got some inspiration from Wilson Phillips, Arkansas. Can you hold on for four more days? We do have some changes that will be arriving here later in the work week, and that means cooler temperatures and a better chance of rain. More on that later. Today, though, it is once again, we're baking out there. Temperatures into the upper 90s already in the capital city with a mixture of sun and clouds. It's 96 in Russellville, 96 in Hot Springs. You step outside, it's tropical. Those dew points are into the 70s, so heat indices already exceeding above 105 in Little Rock. Stuttgart, 107 is what it feels like in Pine Bluff. It feels like 103 in Russellville. Heat advisory in effect this afternoon all the way through this evening. That's because it could feel as high as 105 to 110 in some spots. The radar is quiet at this time, but I'm not going to rule out there could be an isolate to stray pop up shower storm. I think the best opportunity of that 20% will be in northeast Arkansas. And as we take a look at your planner today, temperatures topping out into the upper 90s to low 100s. This trend does stick around for a few more days, but like I said, changes are on the way. I'll have more on that coming up. All right, Nathan, thank you. New at noon, we just got these details into the newsroom a moment ago. We are learning more about a deadly weekend shooting involving Benton police. What we know right now, it happened last night around 815 after a chase that ended in a traffic stop near the corner of Cox and Edison streets. According to investigators, the suspect, 42 year old William Whitfield, was shot by an officer during that stop. Whitfield died from his injuries. The officer is now on paid administrative leave while the department conducts an internal investigation. There there are still some unanswered questions here. We're going to be following up with the Benton Police Department to learn more about those that incident, and we will update you as soon as we get those answers. Little Rock Police investigating an early morning homicide happening just after midnight at 2118 Boulevard Avenue. Officers found Amos Coleman when they arrived, and he later died from a gunshot wound. If you have any information about this shooting, you're asked to call LRPD. The trial of Kayvon Ward, the man accused of killing a Hot Springs police officer in 2020, got underway this morning. THV 11's Ian Russell has been in the courtroom since the beginning of jury selection, and he brought us more updates just before lunch. Opening statements began at 8 a.m. The defense told the court that Ward was diagnosed with schizophrenia. His attorney said that doesn't excuse his actions, but can, quote, offer insight. The prosecution focused on Officer Brent Scrimshire and his kindness and willingness to work with Ward on that day in 2020. The jury then heard from the first witness, Hot Springs Police Sergeant Jerry Freeman. So we've got to have more on the beginning of the trial and what the witnesses say this afternoon. That's coming up tonight at 5 and 6. Health officials continue to struggle with how to contain the monkeypox outbreak that is spreading around the world. The U.S. has seen a tenfold increase in cases over the past month. Natalie Brand has more details from Washington. The World Health Organization now says monkeypox is a public health emergency of international concern. We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. Here in the U.S., Dr. Ashish Jha, the White House COVID response coordinator, told CBS's Face the Nation the administration is looking into potentially declaring an emergency, but they're not there yet. We think we can get our arms around this thing, but obviously if we need further tools, we will invoke them as we need them. The CDC reports there are nearly 3,000 confirmed monkeypox cases nationwide, and that includes two new cases in children, likely the result of household transmission, according to health officials. Anybody who has monkeypox can spread it to others. Uh, it is through skin-to-skin -skin contact, uh, direct and prolonged contact. 
uh, we're not surprised that there are, you're going to see some other individuals get infected as well. Lawmakers are calling on the White House to step up its response. A group of 50 House Democrats wants the administration to declare a public health emergency to accelerate vaccine delivery. I don't know why uh, there aren't more vaccines available. I'm hearing from health care providers in my district that there are people lining up to get vaccinated and they don't have the vaccines for them. And that is a real problem. We're going to be releasing hundreds of thousands of more vaccines in the next uh, days and weeks. So there is a very substantial ramping up of response that is happening right now. But for now, in the nation's hotspots, local health officials are prioritizing first doses for at-risk people until they receive more supply. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And the Biden administration expects to release more than 1.6 million vaccine doses in the coming months. Well, a heads up for family dollar shoppers. The chain is recalling hundreds of items that have been stored at the wrong temperature. Affected items include toothpaste, sunscreen, cough drops, deodorant, soap, and more. All the products shipped to stores between May 1st and June 10th. There's a full list on THV11.com if you want to double check. Recalled items can be brought back to the store without a receipt. It's more problems for this company, which has already recalled hundreds of products, closed more than 400 stores earlier this year after inspectors found more than 1,000 dead rats in its West Memphis warehouse, which closed back in May. Well, folks in southwest Little Rock are about to have fewer options for grocery shopping. Next month, they say the goodbye to Kroger on Colonel Glen, and one city director calls that bad news. TH311's Brooke Buckner has more on the community impact and what the city is doing to try and help. A lot of people are upset about it. Carmela Phillips goes to Kroger on Colonel Glen every Sunday. It's convenient. It's honestly the only convenient store for me to leave downtown to go to going home. I use their pharmacy. She believes the closure is going to negatively affect the Southwest Little Rock community. There's elderly people that can't drive very far to go to the pharmacies to get groceries. It will make it a lot harder. The closest other Kroger's are almost six miles away. One's four miles away. Kathy Webb serves as city director for Ward 3 and is a chief executive officer of the Arkansas Hunger Relief Alliance. She says this area is not in a food desert, but with Kroger closing, it's close to being one. We know that it has detrimental health effects on people. There's another grocery store right down the street, but Webb says people should have more choices. For some people, transportation is an issue. Cost is an issue. Webb says she's working on alternative ways to serve the community. But one of the things that I'm focusing on right now is to try to come up with a set of policy recommendations for the governor and for other uh, decision makers so that when grocery stores close, whether they're in urban areas or in rural areas, we will have examples from other states of what they've done to mitigate that damage. In Little Rock, Brooke Buckner, THV 11 News. Brooke, thank you. And the city board understanding is that the store is going to close August 13th, and Kroger told them it's because it's not making enough money. Kroger for the meanwhile, has not responded to any attempts that we've made to contact them since we brought to this story last week. The high cost of staying cool this summer heat in this summer heat wave is putting a strain on some Arkansas families, but help is available starting today. Applications are being taken for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP. This program provides money to help people in paying those summer electric bills. You can find out more, including on how to apply by texting the word BILLS, B-I-L-L-S, to 501-376-1111. We will send you a link on where you can find your county's application form. Well, one of the most used items at your house right now is probably the AC. HVAC servicemen and women are certainly working tirelessly to meet the demand of callers, but how are supply chain issues affecting how long it takes to fix your units? And is your unit even broken? Here's T311's Frederick Price asking those questions. The demand for air conditioning in this summer heat wave is certainly high. It's been hectic. It's been a busy summer. Drew Vest with Pascal Heating and Air says they've seen up to 1,400 calls in one day. But the heat isn't the only issue some companies are facing. In the summer, demand is so high that you're going to inevitably run into some problem. Problems like supply chain issues. He says the increased demand has put a strain on servicemen. There are some companies that they're looking at 
four to five week lead times on that equipment. But he says they've been preparing for quite some time. Is that we keep a very large warehouse stocked with most equipment in stock. And so we're a little more insulated from supply chain problems. John Lee owns Bill Lee Service. So prices are definitely increasing across the board and supply issues are a thing. He says he's seeing an increase in the amount of people needing help. Between 50 and 150 calls a day. A lot of, uh, a lot of people are experiencing breakdowns. Vest says it's important to know that your central heating and air systems are designed to cool your home at at least 20 degrees below the actual temperature outside. Usually, if it's 100 degrees outside, we can keep a house at 70 degrees. And it doesn't necessarily mean your unit isn't working anymore. You're getting just straight sunlight in the afternoons. Uh, if your house gets up to 75 degrees, it's not necessarily a problem with your unit. It's just you have to realize that it's 104 degrees outside and that unit is working as hard as possible. He recommends creating what is called a maintenance agreement with your service provider. A twice a year maintenance will just make sure that if you do have problems, we catch them before it's 104 out. And Lee agrees, saying maintaining your system is key. If you typically, if people have a maintenance agreement, um, they tend to see less breakdowns than those who don't. In Little Rock, Frederick Price, THV 11 News. Good stuff, Frederick. Hey, don't forget, Little Rock's dirtiest 5K is happening this week. The Mud Run is returning after five years on the sidelines. It's at Western Hills Park on Wednesday. We are excited to be a part of it. If you want ticket information, text the word MUD to 501-376-1111. And by Wednesday, we'll have a small chance of a pop-up shower storm, but that chance really goes up to close out the work week as a cold front, yes, a cold front, moves into the state. Much cooler temperatures in my extended forecast. I'll let you know what they are next. And your favorite ice cream flavors could be on the endangered list. A look at how climate change could impact some popular ice cream ingredients. That's still ahead.